guys, it's Hannah and this is the Weekly Market Wrap Up. I do want to continue to drill it into all of your heads that you can always email me and share your thoughts and opinions about any of the topics that we cover during the show. We do have some positive news to report this week. Europe and Asia are looking up, which has helped fuel a small rally in the markets for much of this week. And the potential de-escalation in Syria has added to the growing optimism. However, traders are still aware the Syria situation can turn at any point and, of course, ongoing Fed tapering speculation continues to put a toll on some of the enthusiasm in the markets on Thursday. First, let's talk equities, where market action posted three strong sessions this week. But Thursday's market action in U.S. equity sector flatlined, with the major indices closing, on average, three-tenths of a percent below the prior trade. All eyes continue to be focused on Syria, where it appears that the situation is de-escalating, with the U.S. Secretary of State and his Russian counterpart being scheduled to discuss an exit strategy. In other news, the Dow Jones not-so-industrial average will add Goldman Sachs, Nike and Visa to its 30-stock lineup, replacing Alcoa, Hewlett-Packard and the Bank of America. The change is one of the biggest in the Dow since April 2004 and reflects the evolving nature of the overall economy. Although it should be noted that mere inclusion in the Dow is not necessarily bullish for the individual companies involved. Shifting over to currencies, some notable shifts occurred in the Forex market this week. The US dollar index has been declining steadily since last Friday as the Syria event combined with Fed tapering speculation is pressuring the greenback. The dollar yen pair received a boost earlier in the week as the Tokyo 2020 bid for the Olympic Games won out over bids from Madrid and Istanbul, which fueled optimism for the Japanese market. The euro dollar pair has been rising throughout the week as Europe continues its road to recovery backed by recent comments by ECB president that monetary policy will continue to be accommodative. Well, that's enough from currencies. Let's find out who rocked the market this week and who didn't have the same sort of luck. The winner for this week is Pandora, or ticker symbol P. Pandora shares jumped up over 13% early in the session before closing at $23.97 per share. Over optimism regarding a new change in leadership as Brian McAndrews, former senior vice president of Microsoft, will take over as CEO, president and chairman, replacing longtime head Joe Kennedy. This will be welcome news to long-term investors as Pandora, while being technically strong, is fundamentally poor due not only to its negative net income, but also due to bearish cost-to-revenue trends and a dramatic increase in liabilities. And the loser for this week is the men's warehouse, ticker symbol MW. Shares were down nearly 12% earlier into the session as its quarterly results and outlook missed Wall Street's expectations. While the miss is significant, this company is a perfect example of where an investor would want to apply a buy-on-the-dips contrarian approach due to a divergence between the bearish earnings report and bullish fundamentals, specifically positive trending cost to revenue ratios, positive assets to liabilities margin, and reasonable accumulation of inventory. Well, those are our winners and losers for this week. Now we want you to weigh in. You tell us in the comment section below what company is the top pick and the stinker for the week. And finally, good old precious metals. Oh, how we love reporting on their roller coaster ride every week. Gold and silver took a nasty tumble again this week, as both metals are desperately holding on to the support lines of current trend channels. For gold in particular, this support line coincides with the 50-day moving average, and the higher spot price really needs to move higher from here to avoid severe technical damage. Palladium was a slight disappointment this week with the price action failing to hold the $700 level. It is precariously positioned from a technical standpoint, which is near-term bearish. The long-term implications are still positive though, and that will not change unless the market retests $600. And that wraps it up. Again, thank you so much for joining us for another weekly market wrap up. I really hope you enjoy this weekend, but before you leave, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, find us on Facebook and Twitter. For VNN, I'm Hannah Bernard.